What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because in today's video we're going to be showing off one of my favorite GX archetypes of all time. In all fairness, I like a lot of GX archetypes but in today's video we're focusing on Cyber Dragon and it's not just any Cyber Dragon build. It's a going second blind OTK deck and on top of that it's featuring the brand new card Clockwork Knight. This card is absolutely insane for the deck and that's why I really wanted to bring you guys this profile. Now if you guys do enjoy these videos, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content just like this one we upload five days a week here on the channel deck profiles combo videos dual replays all that good stuff it's right here on the channel so make sure you guys subscribe to stay tuned into all that good stuff i hope you guys enjoyed today's video and with that let's get right into the deck profile all right so just before we get into the deck profile here i do want to say that cyber dragon has always been one of my favorite decks i mean it's a gx deck so you know i'm gonna love it and on top of that i think it got insane with the new edition of clockwork night which i'm going to talk about a little bit later into the video and i'm going to go into a little bit more depth but i do want to say that I love this deck. I think it's a very fun deck. Let's get right into it. We are going to start off with three Cyber Dragon, of course. I'm still playing three. Some builds I've actually seen cut the Cyber Dragon to two, but I still like the three Cyber Dragon. Keep in mind, you are going second with this deck. You are trying to break boards and OTK. And so for that reason, even just drawing a Cyber Dragon, being able to special summon it to start your turn is very, very powerful, especially with something like Clockwork Knight, where you can essentially just contact fuse your opponent's entire board away with just a single Cyber Dragon, which is insane, right? So that's why I like to play the three Cyber Dragon. Of course, we're playing three Cyber Dragon Core. Core is the best normal summon of the deck, so you got to be playing three of the core. And the really cool thing about this format specifically is a lot of people are not going to be on Ash Blossom or Veil or Imperm. Those cards are not super relevant because of the tier limit matchup. And even the Fluandries matchup, Imperm and Veiler can be good, but they can also play around those cards. They can play around Ash and whatnot as well. So because of that, I think Core is actually really powerful because you're never going to really be worried about this getting negated in any way. So that's why I like playing the three core. We're playing the three hers as well. Hers is one of your best cards to pitch off of your galaxy soldier just for a lot of reasons it's another cyber dragon name keep in mind all of these cards become cyber dragon while on field or in the graveyard so even if you don't open the cyber dragon you can start off your turn by normal summoning core searching and then contact using your entire opponent's board away which is kind of crazy right so all these cards are cyber dragon names we have a nashter as a one of extender i think this card is really cool except that you really want to make space in this deck for board breaking cards you don't want to keep putting in all the cyber dragon names you really just want to max out on the essential ones which you are here with hers core and cyber dragon it's also something you can just search if you already open the other name so that's why we like the one nasher and the one jizukiru this can come up as well helps you break boards kaijus are never a bad thing so that's it for the cyber dragon ish monsters i guess jizukiru is kind of like the honorary cyber dragon then we're moving on to three Therion king regulus i really really like this card i think this card is insane even though this is a going second otk deck this becomes just another big body for you also fun fact i don't know if any of you guys know this ruling but if you use the Cyber Dragons in the Spell or Trap card zone, you can actually use those to contact away with your opponent's board. That's a really cool ruling that I feel like a lot of people don't know. And I think that's something that's really, really insane. So I really like Regulus for that sense. Also, if you don't end up OTKing, it sets up another form of disruption for you, which is really, really powerful. So I like playing the three Theory on King Regulus. And then we're playing the three Galaxy Soldier. I think Galaxy Soldier just makes a lot of sense because all your monsters here are light outside of the Regulus. And this gives you access to your rank fives, which is really nice. But it also gives you access to your Link Summons, which is also really powerful and can help Help you otk your opponent as well so that's why i like to max out on the galaxy soldier then we are playing the two theory on this coliseum this card is really good of course because it gets you into your regulus now you can argue with the ratios you guys can play three this coliseum and two regulus i personally like to play three regulus and two coliseum and the reason for that is just because i'd rather see the monster yes like i said earlier ash and stuff is not as prevalent in the format however you know if this card gets hit with some kind of backward disruption you know people are going to be playing cosmic cyclones and whatnot in the main deck just because we have fissure back at three we have max Cosmo back at three. This is all built to be post ban list, right? So for that reason, it's like, I feel like this card is just a lot more susceptible now. And so that's why I like to play the three regulars. However, there are arguments to play the three disc Coliseum and the two regulars, but I just really like these ratios. Then we are playing three of the brand new Clockwork Knight. Now, whether you're playing a going first build of Cyber Dragon or a going second build of Cyber Dragon, this card is absolutely insane. So all face up monsters on the field become machine monsters, not the graveyard. Unfortunately, if it did it for the graveyard as well, that would be insane. But all monsters on the field become machine monsters. And that can be really cool with the trap builds. Also, when you do rivalry walks and whatnot. But the really cool thing about this card is all your machine monsters gain 500 attack or your opponent's machine monsters lose 500 attack. So not only are you going to be able to turn your opponent's monsters into machine monsters, which means that now you can contact fuse their entire board away with this card, even going second, if you just activate clockwork, normal summon a cyber dragon or a special summon 
summon a Cyber Dragon and then contact your opponent's entire board, that's very viable in today's format. And they're not leaving the field by card effect, so if you're thinking about the tier limit matchup, they're not going to be getting their effects because nothing was sent by card effect. Now, I do want to say this about Clockwork Knight as well. It has a really cool effect that I feel like a lot of people gloss over because they're also focused on the machine effect. However, there's another effect where you can banish this card from their graveyard and then you can discard a card and add an earth machine from your deck to your hand. Why is that really cool? Because Regulus is an earth machine. So now you have another way of searching Regulus if you need to, if this gets sent to your graveyard by any means. So I really like three Clockwork Knight. I don't think you can play this deck without the Clockwork Knight. This card is just so insane. And then we're playing the three Cyber Emergency, of course, searches any of your Cyber Dragon cards. We're playing the one rev system, the one repair plant, as well as the one Cyber Low Fusion. We're not playing Overload Fusion. The reason for that is because it's a non-searchable fusion card. Also, this deck can OTK without the Overload Fusion. Yes, Overload Fusion is a great card. I don't think you just really need it in this build. And then we are playing the three machine duplication, of course. One normal summon core, one machine duplication, you're winning the game. You're getting so much value off of that. So you're going to be winning the game in that sense. Then we are playing a lot of back row hate. And again, I think I mentioned this earlier, but because of the brand new ban list, Macrocosm is at three, D Fissure is at three. There's a lot of cards that can really, really disrupt this matchup. So that's why we are playing a lot of back row hate. Also, this back row hate is pretty good into the tier limit matchup as well, because you can hit the Suleeks, you can hit the Pirillarino, the field spell. So you can hit those cards, which is really good into the tier limit matchup as well, because those cards can be a nuisance sometimes. So we are playing a lot of back row hate. So here we're playing the two Cosmic Cyclones, the three Lightning Storms, the one Harpy's Feather Duster. I think these are the perfect ratios that you need to play. I didn't want to make this deck more than 41 cards. Technically, you could play 42, play the third Cyclone, but I think these are really good ratios. The really cool thing about these ratios as well is they're actually pretty good into the Fluandries matchup also. So you're dealing with the tier limit matchup with the field spell and the trap, but you're also dealing with the Fluandries matchup as well, which is going to be very prominent in today's format. So that's why I like these cards specifically because it hits the two decks that are essentially going to be the most problematic, both the tier limit matchup and the Fluandries matchup, right? The other matchups in between, you should have a pretty good time just because you have so many cards to deal with them. But both the tier limit and the Fluandries are the main focus and these cards hit those decks, which is really cool. Also, I do want to mention one thing because we are on the topic of back row hate and we are on the topic of defissure. Keep in mind, the really cool thing about Cyberload Fusion is that you can actually put cards back from your banish zone into your deck, which is really, really cool because under defissure, under Macro Cosmo, this card kind of does help you play through those. Now, of course, you don't want to have to be in a situation where you have to play through those. That's why we're playing so much back row hate, but this card does help you do that. And then we're playing just the one Cybernetic Overflow. I think Overflow just makes a lot of sense, even though this is a going second deck. I still like to play the one just because, again, even if you don't OTK your opponent, you are going to be able to break their boards. And if you can set up an overflow on top of breaking your opponent's board, then you're pretty much going to be winning the game because you're just going to have too much on the board. Like whether you have an infinity plus a regulus, and let's say you have an overflow as well, like you've broken your opponent's board and then you have multiple forms of disruption. So that's why I really like the one overflow. And then lastly, to round it off, we are playing three pot of prosperity. Prosperity, I think, is very important in this deck. It's very necessary, to be honest with you, because it gets you to your board breakers, it gets you to your cyber dragons, it gets you to your clockwork knights. It's very important. Whatever you're missing in your hand, this card helps you essentially get into it. So that's why I do like the three pot of prosperity. On top of that, you're playing multiples of a lot of cards in the extra deck. So you guys can actually get rid of some of them. And that's why prosperity, I think, is really, really powerful. So that's it for the main deck. 41 cards in the main deck. Moving on to the extra deck here, we're playing the one Mega Fleet Dragon and we're playing three Chimera Tech Fortress. Why are we playing three Chimera Tech Fortress? Because we're playing the three Clockwork Knight. This card essentially helps you break any single board in combination with Clockwork Knight. And that's why I like to play the three Fortress. Before I used to play two Mega Fleet, two Fortress, but I think three Fortress just makes a lot more sense now with the Clockwork Knight. We're playing the two Rampage Dragon. Rampage is really good, helps you OTK. Then we're playing the one Nova and the one Infinity. I used to like playing two Infinity or two Nova, but the thing is with these two cards is that essentially like you're not going to really be making them multiple times in a game. Again, you're trying to break boards, you're trying to OTK. And if you're not OTKing, after you break your opponent's board, you're trying to establish a board where your opponent can't really play through it. So that's why I think the one on one is fine. We're playing the one Pleiades, which I think is really cool. The one Ding Girsu. Keep in mind, we're playing Ding because Fortress is a level eight. Regulus is a level eight. So that's really cool because Ding Girsu helps you send cards your opponent controls. And then you can also put the Zeus on top of the Ding Girsu. I think these ratios are really, really nice because if you are trying to break boards, you are trying to go for game. Sometimes the Fortress on its own, if it's not big enough, won't actually help you outside of breaking your opponent's board so you can use these kind of fortresses on your side of the field with like a regulus just to help you go into ding and zeus and again if you are going into ding you're trying to push for game anyways and then if you don't push for game you have zeus which is another form of disruption for you that's why i really like these ratios and then we're playing the one nightmare phoenix again just for back row hate this card is the one card i think that is the most cuttable this is only really good because it does again help you get rid of back row which is really prominent in today's format but if you don't want to play this card you can actually cut it and then just play a second nova which can be really powerful as well so phoenix is just a flex spot for you 
We're playing the one Almirage, the one Anima. Anima is really good going second as well because if your opponent doesn't play around it, you normal summon hers. You go into Anima, you get to take their card. It's really, really powerful. And then the one Cyber Dragon Seeger, of course. So that's it for the extra deck. I think it's pretty self explanatory. Nothing too complicated, I guess. It just all makes a lot of sense. The only thing is three Fortress, I think, just makes a little bit more sense just because of the three Clockwork Knights. So that's it for the main deck and the extra deck. I do want to give you guys a little bit of a side deck and a little bit of theory behind this side deck. Now, keep in mind, this side deck is not exactly what you guys need to be playing. This is just kind of some quick theory that I put together because it helps you going first in different situations, going second in different situations. I'm going to talk about that. So again, you are playing this deck to essentially have a decent matchup both into tier and into Flawandries. However, if you do go against a tier limit matchup, you do really want to specify the cards in your deck post side so that you can beat the tier limit matchup. So if you know you're going to be going second against tier limit, let's say into game two or into game three, you guys can cut out the lightning storms. You guys can cut out the overflow. You guys can lower the ratios on some of these cards to play six of the Bisted Monsters. I think the Bisted Monsters are still very important into the tier limit matchup. And then on top of that, the really cool thing about the Bisted Monsters is that they are big bodies for you. These end up just helping you OTK when you are going second as well. Helps you disrupt your opponent and OTK. So for that reason, I like to side these in if I know I'm going second against the tier limit matchup. Now the Fluandries matchup. If you are going against Fluandries or even just decks that make kind of wide monster boards that don't put up a lot of negations, what you can do is you play 3 Raigeki. I think 3 Raigeki is really actually important in today's format. You can start your turn by activating a Regeki, let's say against the Flandries matchup, or there's going to be a lot of people playing Inspector Border or Grand Maju. There's a lot of different decks that you they can actually play with Fissure now being at three. So Regeki just helps you solve a lot of those problems, which is really nice. And again, clearing your opponent's board against those kind of control decks helps you OTK super, super easily. So I like the three Regeki. Then when you are forced to go first, or if you know you're in an unfavorable matchup and you think you want to go first, there are really good cards. We have three Rivalry of the Warlords. Rivalry is insane in this deck because Clockwork makes everything on the field a machine so as soon as your opponent normal summons or commits anything to the board you can flip rivalry and then now they're kind of stuck they're machine locked which is really really powerful and then on top of that all your monsters are machine so that's never going to be an issue and then lastly you're playing the three soul drain if you're forced to go first against a tier limit matchup soul drain essentially helps you against that so here we're playing six go first cards and then we're playing nine go second cards just different options against different decks that you guys can play and i think it covers pretty much everything again this side deck is not set in stone you guys can maybe cut the bestials to different ratios the regekis can be evenly matched evenly matched is another good option so there's a lot of cards that you guys can put in this side deck here that i wanted to show you is just a quick template on top of that keep in mind the side deck should always be built based off of your locals so if you go to a locals that plays a lot of flunderies then you want to be able to be prepared for that if you go to a locals that plays a lot of tournaments you want to be prepared for that so this is just a quick template you guys don't have to use this one for one just giving you guys an idea so that is it for today's video i hope you guys did enjoy that is my take on going second blind otk cyber dragon now if you guys want to see the trap build or a more control build let me know in the comment section down below and i can definitely do that for you i think this deck is super super fun i think there's a really cool way to play this deck in today's format especially with the inclusion of clockwork knight i think that card is just insane so if you guys do enjoy these videos make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu Gi Oh content just like this one we upload five days not four not three, not two, not one. We upload five days a week here on Spanko. Deck profiles, combo videos, dual replays, all that good stuff. You'll see it right here. So make sure you guys subscribe and stay tuned into all of that. Thank you guys all for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. And with that, Spanko signing out. Peace.